Today, we embark on an extraordinary journey through time and culture. In this episode of It's Tony Baby, we bring you an in-depth exploration of Museo Sugbo, a captivating museum nestled in the heart of Cebu. Prepare to be immersed in the rich tapestry of Cebu's history as we unveil the hidden treasures and remarkable stories that lie within the walls of Museo Sugbo. From this humble beginnings as a provincial jail to its transformation into a living repository of Cebu's heritage, this museum stands as a testament to the resilience and vibrant spirit of the Filipino people. We will discover the triumphs and struggles of the Cebuano people, from the Spanish colonization to the American occupation, we unravel the intricate threads that weave together the fabric of Cebu's past. We will not only transport you through time, but also awaken a sense of pride and appreciation for the vibrant history and cultural tapestry that is Cebu. All that and more is coming up next on It's Tony Baby. So good morning, uh, good afternoon. I am Rosal and my co-intern, April. So um, before we will roam around the nine galleries here in Museo Subbu, I'll just give you a brief history of Museo Subbu before. So Museo Subbu was once called Carcel de Cebu or a Cebu Provincial Jail. And it was integrated on August 5, 2008 as a Museo Subbu uh, of our Governor Gwendolyn Garcia. So we have the nine galleries here. We have the pre-colonial gallery, the Spanish gallery. We have the American and the World War II. And we have five more galleries at the back. We also have the gold of Cebu. Yeah. Um, Cebu was abundance of gold before. Um, but uh, when the Spaniards came here to Cebu and barter it with um, iron nails, the gold they bartered it to iron nails. Gold for iron nails. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a pretty good trade, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, because the Cebuanos before don't know the, the value, value of the gold. And they yeah. said they're abundant of gold. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Basically, we were full. So we, yeah. Cool. has gold. What's that? Church it has gold. <laughs> I told you. I can look at fifty cent. We are not. We are from the first world country before. <laughs> <laughs> we are rich. Yeah, you until, were the... until we were screwed and scammed by <laughs> iron nails. Yeah, exactly. I was just gonna say, <laughs> trading gold for iron nails. Well, you know what's funny is that gold obviously must have been very abundant. And it um, it is a native house or a bahay kubo. It's made of bamboo and coconut leaves. Is that is that our house, Hai? Is mm. that our future house? Very open, so I want, right? Very nice, okay. Yeah, and we also have the golden tara of Obusan. This is a 21 karat gold female figurine found in 1917 from a river bank of the Waves River. So um, it was, uh, it is just a replica, the original one. Oh, is I thought it was the gold. <laughs> <laughs> Museum of Natural History of Chicago Museum. Yeah, yeah, because if that was solid gold, that would be worth a lot of money. Why, why were there so gold here? It always goes to the U.S. Uh, it, well, <laughs> apparently. Uh, Cebu, a Filipino sell, uh, sold the golden the, tower uh, to Americans. Yeah. So Cebu was colonized by Spanish under 333 years. So Ferdinand Magellan came here in Cebu and met Raja Humabun. Raja Humabun is our king here in Cebu. So a week later, um, Huma Raja Humabun and his wife was baptized as Christian. Um, Humabun took the name Carlos and Amihan took the name of Juana. So Ferdinand Magellan gave the image of Santo Nino to Amihan because Amihan loves collecting anitos. That's the reason why we're celebrating um, Cebu celebrating Sinulu Festival every third Sunday of January. Mm -hmm. So after 20 days, Ferdinand and Magellan went to Mactan and fought with Lapu-Lapu. And Magellan has 50 soldiers and Lapu-Lapu has 1,500 soldiers. The reason of his loss. Magellan had how many soldiers? 50 soldiers. 50 soldiers against how many? 1,500. Okay, well that was definitely an unmatched... Uh... <laughs> Um, because um, they said that uh, Ferdinand Magellan is not a colonizer, uh, but a navigator. Yeah. Because um, he just only wants to spread Christianity, but unfortunately, Lapu Lapu doesn't want to be a Lapu -Lapu Christian. Lapu -Lapu -Lapu. From what I've learned, it was sort of forced onto the Filipinos. Well, kind of. I mean, based on that, that jail we, or the, the fort we went to, and they basically imprisoned them if they didn't, if they didn't adopt their Christianity. 
Yeah, yeah. same goes with like Americans. They come as a friend but colonize you. Yeah, no, I totally agree. After the death of Magellan in the Battle of Patan, Miguel Lopez de Legazpi came here to Cebu and became the first Spanish governor in Cebu. What was his name? Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. Is that where Legazpi gets his name? Really? Oh, cool. So there's also a sailor named Juan de Camos found the image of Santo Nino where, where the Basilica del Santo Nino was built right now. So we have the documents of Miguel Lopez de Legazpi's first um, confirmation as the governor. So the Spanish sold the, um, the Philippines to the Americans in worth um, 20 million dollars. Yeah, so that's why in 1899, the, um, the Americans came here and colonized Cebu. Yeah, I seem to remember the history was the Spanish and the Americans had a fight that was planned. Yeah. And <laughs> the Americans won and kicked out the Spanish. Yeah, we also have the Philippine flag. Missile? Yeah. Uh, a bomb. Oh, here, a 1,000 pound demolition bomb. Good lord, we're quite sure that's diffused, right? <laughs> Not really. No? Oh dear, <laughs> don't step on it, honey. It can be triggered with a noise. <laughs> <laughs> By a giggle? Okay. First aid. Yeah. It's an emergency note. Yeah, we are for emergency money because um, before, if um, we Cebuanos lost our communication with um, with the Manila, yeah. so um, we um, we authorized to print money here. Uh -huh. So it was called um, emergency money. So yes, before yes. we, when we colonize in uh, Americans, um, Japanese, we need to bring uh, three different kinds of money. Wow. The to be caught um, with these notes meant instant death. Yeah, when you pay because um, when you pay, um, when you used to pay the guerrilla money, it was a anti-Japanese. Oh, so, yeah, if they I caught see. you with that money, yeah, they will um, kill, kill you. Right, because so you, you were need to, supposed like, to use Japanese money. Yeah, you should pay Japanese money to the Japanese. Japanese yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So having your own money was a a sign of rebellion. Ooh, where the challenge the Wow, these paintings are beautiful. This is the first mass. And this is where Rahul Mabun and Amihan was baptized as Christian. It's beautiful. And this is where their battle in Mactan with Lapulat. So in this area we have the how the Filipino world looked before. With the one that you've saw earlier. Yeah. The Bahai Kubo or the Native House. Nipa Hats. Yeah. Nipa Hats. these islands of different islands, different islands. We have Raja Humabon who is the king of Cebu. We have the Lapu Lapu who was a king in Mactan. So as you can see, they have a lot of tattoos. Yeah. So tattoos before was called pintados. Yeah, so um, the tattoo has a meaning. Yeah, every tattoo has a meaning, so. We heard that these arrows here Indicate how many people they killed. Yeah. How many enemies they killed. Yeah. So, but it also have a different meaning. Mm -hmm. Let's proceed to the next gallery. Yeah, for the, sure. Uh, meaning of the tattoo. And this Karakua ship is a warship. And this banner represents their victory. Oh, that's beautiful. So this was the, this is the original language right. of the Filipino yeah. people. But today we are more on like um, American we're now in Americanization. Yeah, we yeah. adapt uh, Alphabet. a alphabet, A B C D. Yeah. Yeah. And That's why English. We Filipino don't know this. 
Well, here's, don't here's, crack this. <laughs> here's the funny thing. Yeah, I was just gonna say, there's your Bicolano, honey. Yeah. She's from Bicol. Yeah. And you've got your Masana. Tagalog, your Bicol, your Mindanao. I always wondered why there were so many different diverse languages in yeah. one country. Now I kind of have a better understanding of why that is. It's because you're all so separated in individual Great. islands and areas. In Philippines, we have 182 languages. It, really? Yes. yes. I actually yeah. did not know that. Dialects. Dialects. Really? Wow. That's, That's why if you learn Tagalog, I can speak Bacon. Because <laughs> it's, sort, it's sort of the <laughs> fundamental language. But look at how much, how different each one is though. Yeah, it is. Because we are diverse in the language. It's composed of different islands, honey. And this is the clothing and status of the Filipinos before. If you wear like this, it's um, may identify you that you're rich. Maybe sure is. This is you're broke. It's a <laughs> if you wear this, you're broke. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a poor or slaves, and this is in the middle. Or ah, average. so this is the slave. Yeah. yeah. So the slave one are the one who killed. Right. <laughs> no, this is the sample of the slave. And this is the um, meaning of the tattoos. Okay, yeah, tattoos. yeah, I'm curious about that. And this is the equipment that they use for your tattoo. For having tattoos. Your pants, your pants, your pants. Hibiscus. Oh, yeah, good morning. Serpent, 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 crocodile. Oh, this is what they use to yeah, yeah. for tattooing, like manually. It's made of bamboo and just uh, like spine of wangomelo. Yeah, like wangomelo. Like the, what? The, the, the old lady, the tattoo. Oh, old right, right, right. I've what, heard of her. That's what she's using. In, in, uh, in... On the northern part of... Yeah, in... Uh, and we also have Babaylan, or the fortune teller. Before, we don't have a doctor. We have a healer, a healer, right. or a manga And then we have the natural resources from the Philippines. We have the Philippine flag, we have the crocodile, we have the tarsier in Bohol. Oh, we met the tarsier. Yeah, <laughs> with the big eyes. Yes. Yeah, so here are some famous um, Cebuano delicacies. Like example, this, this puso. Sticky rice. No, no, it's not sticky not rice. It's not sticky rice. rice. What is it's it? Just it's just rice. Oh, it's just rice. Yeah, mm. it's more. Oh, not yummy. all rice is wrapped in bamboo leaves and sticky. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You can partner it with um, lechon. lechon. Yeah, okay. Or a barbecue. Yeah. Wow. What's the one we haven't tried? What's that? What's the one we haven't tried? It's oh, it's like the... hanging rice. I gotcha. Yes, they used to like hang this. And then we also have sinubang isda or real grilled fish. fish. Gotcha. I have a wish. You're gonna wish? Yeah. How much is the wish gonna cost? Piso. <laughs> My one peso? Okay. One peso wish. Before Tony makes her wish, leave a comment below if you think you know what Tony's wish will be. My one peso wish. What'd you wish for? Millions of money. <laughs> well, you just lost a peso. <laughs> so you're down. You're already down one peso. All right. <laughs> I mean, it should come back. Yeah. So that's it for our day tour of Cebu, but we've got one more spot we're going to go to tonight. Tony has a special place planned that we're going to go check out. So stay tuned for that in one of our next vlogs. Love you all, Tony babies. We will talk to you soon. Bye for now. See you in the next vlog.